May is Melanoma Awareness Month, and today's video is part of my Real Diagnosis Stories series, where I share your melanoma and skin cancer diagnosis stories on my channel. If you would like to submit your diagnosis story to me, please email me at this email address right here. Today, I am honored to share Beverly's story. Grab a drink and listen to Beverly's diagnosis and surgery experience. This is Beverly's story. I am a 76 year old retired surgical nurse. I noticed a small bump on the top of my head last summer. It grew slowly over several weeks and was itchy. I had my yearly skin check with my dermatologist in November and I told her that I thought it was a cyst. She didn't think it was a cyst and biopsied it. I previously had a basal cell on my forehead and she thought that's what it was. We were both shocked when the pathology report said malignant dysmoplastic melanoma. I saw my cancer surgeon four weeks later and he recommended Keytruda immunotherapy. I told him that I had found a similar bump above my left ear the day before, so he did a core biopsy of it. It turned out to be metastatic melanoma. After my second Keytruda infusion, I found another bump over my ear next to the first one. After my fourth infusion, I had melanoma surgery. It took five hours and I came out with a wound vac on my head that was to help with healing and hold the skin grafts in place. It was to stay on my head until I returned to the surgeon in a week. A script for pain medication was sent to my pharmacy. When my son went to pick up the pain meds, he was told that the prescription couldn't be filled because they didn't recognize the physician. My surgery was done in a city 45 miles from the town I live in. By the time the pharmacy approved the prescription, they were about to close and said I could pick it up in the morning. So I had no pain meds. At midnight, the wound vac stopped working because the battery died. The hospital had given me a tub of supplies for the vac, but no instructions. I got up and found the charger and manual, but the vac wouldn't work while it was charging. The manual said that if the vac was off for two hours, I would have to call the doctor and it would have to be replaced. So I charged it for 30 minutes and then turned it on. I woke up at 2.30 a.m. and the vac was off. I turned it on and it worked for two minutes and then the alarm started. I hit the reset and it only worked for two minutes and it alarmed again. After three times, it turned the vac off. So all night long, I had to reset the alarm and turn the vac on and I was in horrible pain. I called the surgeon as soon as the office was open and got an appointment where she had to shave my head in order to get the bandages off that were stuck to my hair. It was decided that the vac wouldn't be needed to my great relief. I had gotten the pain medicine before I went to the doctor, so I went home to sleep. Two days later, the pain was much better. The pathology report said the melanoma on top of my head was dead, but not the mets by my ear and the margins were positive. So I am receiving Keytruda every three weeks for the rest of the year and praying that my immune system will kill the remaining cancer. Beverly, I am so sorry that you have gone through such a horrific surgery and aftercare experience. Please know that I have added you to my prayer list and I am praying for you because you have a long road ahead of you. And I know that many other viewers here will most likely add you to their prayer list as well. Thank you so much for sharing your experience here on this channel. I know your story will help somebody out there to feel less alone. Hi, Sean here, Melanoma Mom. I would love for you to join me in my mission to prevent skin cancer by subscribing to this channel and also by purchasing a t-shirt that says never alone and has the melanoma awareness ribbon on it for the months of April and May. I will be donating all of my profits from the sale of this t-shirt to melanoma research. Thank you so much.